Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Dais, a podcast about the stories taking place in and around El Paso County, Colorado. I'm your host, Scott Anderson, and today I am joined by Jesse Pocock, the CEO and Executive Director of Inside Out, and Liz Smith, the Communications and Advocacy Director. How are both of you doing today? Well, doing great. Thank you so much for having us. Really good. Good. Great. Well, thank you for having me in your space today. This is actually like a really fun space. I really like being here, so thank you for having me out. Uh, But before we get started today, I just want to quickly add that if listeners are interested in more stories about people doing good in and around El Paso County, or hearing from county leadership about local government priorities and how they operate, you can find additional episodes of this podcast on your podcast platform of choice. But to get started today, Jesse, we're going to start with you because you look absolutely ready for this question. Uh, can you share a bit of background about yourself and how you came to be associated with Inside Out? Yeah, thank you so much for asking. Um, it is the honor of my life to be the CEO and Executive Director of Inside Out Youth Services, where we build access, equity, and power with LGBTQIA2 plus young people and have done so for over 30 years in this region. And part of the reason it's the honor of my life is because I am a Colorado Springs person. I, I was born here. I've lived here my whole life and, um, and certainly grew up here as a young LGBTQ person and really encountered a lot of challenges um, at school and in my life and really needed direction, guidance, and community and And did not have that accessible to me in healthy ways. And so it's just such an honor to get to um, invest my time, effort, and energy in creating um, resource towards providing that for others in this community. And and so um, that's why I do this work, um, to, to just create more of that and ensure the doors are open and really incredible programming is happening to support this community. Mm -hmm. And Liz, how about you? How did you find yourself here with Inside Out? Well, uh, similarly, I am also a Colorado Springs person. Uh, I've lived here since I was six years old, so it is my home. Uh, And I grew up a lesbian, an agender lesbian in uh, an area where it didn't feel as though I had comfort, uh, support. I didn't even really know what any of the words meant until Mm -hmm. I got to a certain age where I could really like look it up on my own. So there was no representation, mentorship, role modelship. Um, And so eventually I moved away, came back, and my passion was in sharing stories. So I became a journalist and my favorite stories to share were the ones about LGBTQ people thriving, uh, starting businesses, sharing their art, uh, the young folks who are so active and informed and hoping to like change their communities. And that's how I found Inside Out. And I had no idea that this organization was here when I grew up needing them so much. Mm -hmm. So my role here in communications is making sure whether or not someone needs us, whether they're LGBTQ, they know that we're here. So if the time comes, they have to lean on us. Here we are. Very good. So Jesse, you say that Inside Out has been around for over 30 years. Can you share some of that background about the organization and what the main mission is for Inside Out? Yeah, so so Inside Out was founded in 1990 um, by an uh, individual named Regina Dipadova, who is a social worker, and she was currently working at the El Paso County Health Department. So one thing that people don't actually really realize about our programs is that Inside Out was founded as a program of our health department. And it started off as really recognizing, you know, so who, where are their desperate health outcomes? Where are we seeing communities who may not have the same um, outcomes in health as, you know, their neighbors and so forth? And one of those identified communities was LGBTQ young people and young adults. And so, um, so it was founded as a group of the health department. And at that time, it really focused on discussion groups. So let's get together. Let's talk about challenges. Um, you know, there's therapeutic aspects about it. Uh, and so that was really our foundation of just coming together, recognizing there was a need, the health department creating an opportunity for that need to be met, and a really incredible you know, LGBTQ person who, who stewarded it into existence. Since then, obviously, we've grown to be so much more um, over the past 30 years. But that's really where, where we started. Mm -hmm. 
Very good. So approximately how many people do you serve here in El Paso County and what communities do you serve? So uh, we actually serve around a thousand young people a year oh, wow. um, in our community center and in our family programs. Uh, each year we hold a youth pride celebration at Hillside Community Center where we see uh, thousands of individuals. Um, but then we also do open houses and uh, gratitude dinners, holiday parties, those kinds of things. Um, and then our policy and advocacy work actually impacts uh, 31,000. Wow. Wow. Uh, so within our programs, uh, we typically have about 250 uh, young folks, unique young folks who visit us uh, each year to participate in uh, support groups, resilience programs, life skills trainings, those kinds of things. Uh, and then we have more than 100 parents who are part of our transparenting support group. And this is a group that's really vital because supporting the young people is not uh, the only way to make them safe and healthy in our community. It's also supporting the adults who are meant to support them. Uh, so helping parents navigate hey, my kid just came out. I have no idea what this means or what to do. We have resources. Uh, Transparenting is led by a parent of a trans adult. Um, so she's been through it. Mm -hmm. And she knows how to talk to parents. She knows uh, what people might be asking, what they might need. Mm -hmm. No, that's very good. Yeah. Uh, so can you talk about how important it is then for Inside Out to be viewed as an organization within the community that people can turn to in their time of need? You know, I, I think one of the things, the first thing that comes to my mind is, you know, we really are the only regional organization that that focuses on LGBTQIA2 plus young people and, and really um, works to support their health and, um, and creating pathways for them to be successful in their lives and, and experience that support. And, and so, it's just so vital, you know, when we know, and I hate to go here, but it's, it's an important indicator. When we know young folks are struggling, then it's like, okay, well, how can we, what are, what is getting in the way yeah. and how can we work backwards to, um, to build up support before we have, you know, young folks really struggling, like let's prevent right. some of these outcomes. And so I would say what's really, really important. And like Liz was was speaking about, you know, our theory of change really is looking at, okay, how do we really build support for young people in the inner circle, the trusted adults in their lives, you know, who are supporting them and then their larger community. And, and so we're working on multiple different levels of impacting support for this community. And, and so it's really vital that Folks know we are here. And, and when I say folks, it's not just caregivers and parents, although that's a huge one, and it's not just young people. Mm -hmm. It is teachers, it's pastors, it's all of these community institutions that have these young people within their communities who can also contribute to ensuring that their lives are healthy, mm -hmm. that they have access to opportunities. Um, you know, it takes it takes a village, so to speak, and that's yeah. that's how that works. And so, you know, really, it's it's just so critically important that folks know that we are here to help and support and nurture um, and meet people where they're at yeah. to to do that. Yeah, there are statistics that show um, that LGBTQIA2 plus youth, um, only 29% of them feel as though they can definitely be themselves at home, uh, only 27% at school. And so for a lot of our youth, um, when they come to Inside Out, this is the first place where they can definitely be themselves, figure out who they are, talk to other people about who they are, ask questions, learn. And we're hoping that we're not the only safe space out there. Uh, our four walls just aren't enough for our entire region, our mm -hmm. entire county. We're trying to give people the tools to make themselves a safe space. It's not always a building. Right. Sometimes it's a person. Yeah. So we do trainings out in the community, um, thousands of people a year. Just, you know, what does LGBTQ mean? Like, what are these letters for? Yeah. And how do we use people's proper pronouns? Those kinds of things. And even just those little acts of learning, learning about the community, learning how you can support youth can make spaces safer. So after submitting your grant request to the county, Inside Out was awarded $300,000 of ARPA funding. Can you talk about what that money has gone to fund? Yeah, so our proposal to ARPA um, and the funding to really support, you know, how do we bounce back as a community to serve our most vulnerable community members after a global pandemic that certainly impacted our county. Our focus really was um, in our application, we did a we did a community guided process 
to come up with a strategic plan that really spent time asking folks at different levels and participation among our organization, like what was needed to really support this community. And we came up with primary areas of focus. And, and from that, we said, okay, we've, we know that our young folks are, are having some struggles, particularly in the area of clinical care. So like therapy, um, access to, um, appointments, doctors, you know, um, that type of thing, but also community and some of the other ways that um, we call it positive youth development. And there's this framework called shared risks and protective factors. That's a little bit public healthy, but I'm going (laughs) to tell you anyway, because it's useful to know for everybody, because like Liz said, we can all be participating in in helping to mitigate risks Mm -hmm. and increase strengths for young people. But it really basically says, hey, there's these overlapping risks. And if you do this handful of things to strengthen young people in these ways, it helps mitigate all of these risks at the same time. So what do you mean by risk? Well, I'll just use an easy one that we talk about often, and it's helpful for folks to think about it this way. Um, Suicide prevention. Mm. So we know that young folks are less likely to attempt um, uh, if they have pro-social connections. So connections with young people, they've got trusted adult relationships. So I've got somebody I can go to when I'm struggling with a challenge, um, when they're engaged in school, um, when they have environments like Inside Out, where they can go and be with their peers that are struggling with same, some of the thing, same things, and when they can contribute to their communities. So, so we really operate with that in mind. How can we increase strengths and decrease risks across the board. And so so ARPA really goes towards helping us build out our capacity and resiliency as an organization so that we can do that better, so we can access more people um, and, and tell them about our services and bring them into the framework so that they can start working in their own lives and communities to improve outcomes for LGBTQIA2 plus young people. Um, it was strengthening our operations, our skills, our, our really organizational capacity, um, you know, because of some of the challenges this community faces, one of those big challenges is is lack of access to capital to really invest in these young people. Um, and that means we've been doing a lot with a little for a long time. <laughs> yeah. um, and so, so really... ARPA is helping us strengthen our capacity to reach young people. And then we're seeing it in our program outcomes and results. And so I always think it's important to to talk to funders and people who are interested in improving outcomes on like, okay, well, what does that mean? Well, it means that young people who attend our programs are more likely to report connection with a trusted adult. Mm -hmm. They have a connection. They're more likely to understand the difference between healthy and unhealthy relationships. Boy, that's a really big life skill yeah. and a really important <laughs> adolescent one. Yeah. And so, um, so it really translates into those particular types of outcomes that we measure as an organization to say, okay, we've got 200 young people coming into Inside Out, but so what? What change happens when they come here and when they leave here? Oh my gosh, they're more engaged in school and we don't even do school. Right. Um, what a neat outcome for our young people and, and one that strengthens their ability to engage in school. And it just impacts everybody in the community mm-hmm. um, when we uplift our young people. Yeah, you mentioned capacity, which is so vital because it's enabled us to uh, really ensure that we have the staff uh, and the, the support to meet the needs that we've been seeing in this community for decades at this point. Um, but I think another really important aspect that ARPA helped with was sustainability. Uh, you know, we've been here for 33 years, and our goal is to be here until we're not needed anymore. Um, and so it's really important to help strengthen the the organizational foundations, um, the operations, the procedures, the the you know, it's not really the fun stuff like the community center with the Switch and Mario Kart and right. <laughs> doing all the life skills stuff. Right. Um, but it's vital because it's those processes and procedures and that, that staff support that has really enabled us to um, specialize in the things that we do really well. Mm-hmm. And our programs team can specialize in providing incredible programs and drop-in hours and support to our youth. Um, and our outreach team can specialize in talking with community partners. 
Um, so it's really, it's really helped us in the long run. So you mentioned, you know, working with the community to identify the needs and places that uh, this funding could go to. How do you, I guess, create that network that, you know, you, you trust them to know the needs of the community and then vice versa. They trust you to be able to essentially deliver on meeting those needs. Like, how do you create that network? It's such a good question. I, you know, I think some of it is that Inside Out has just had really long partnerships and relationships, you know, not just across the city, but across the state, across the country. And, you know, I would say the other thing, too, that really helps us. So we do a lot of research when we're thinking through how do we, what programs do we need to create? There's a lot of conversation and research that goes into that. So some of it is, let's pull reports and find out what is happening in this community nationally. What is our Healthy Kids Colorado saying, you know, survey that goes out to um, schools locally. We've got some data from El Paso County. Of course, um, El Paso County isn't implementing that survey this year. And so, or, or whenever it runs, I think it's every two to three years, but we do have some historical data that really shows that this, that, that LGBTQ plus young people in schools have some of the highest disparities in health comes and the greatest risks. So that really helps us know. And it, and it breaks down to exactly what they are. So we really, we take that information, we survey our youth, we talk to our families, we talk to staff, what are you seeing? What are you experiencing? And then we start innovating. Okay. How do we, again, how do we go back and prevent? How do we start intervening now and preventing for future and building things out that way? And then for checks and balances, of course, you know, we, we collect metrics and we review those and, um, and then also, you know, we're part of a network of community centers across the states where we get to um, collaborate with other centers um, doing similar work to talk about what they know or even to innovate curriculum f- specifically for this community. We work really closely with the state implementing curriculum. So, so that's sort of like, I know it's very um, specific, but that's typically how we are constantly on so many different levels. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, here's what we're doing. Here's why we're doing it. Here's here's the theory of change that demonstrates that this is going to create the outcome that we expect. Let's talk and ask people, is it? Um, Let's survey to see if it in fact is. If it is, let's keep doing it. If it isn't, let's revise. If if we can be better, let's do that. So it's it's a multi-tiered process. Yeah, trust doesn't just happen overnight. You know, it's been 33 years of this organization doing its best for this community. Um, And all of us just trying to make sure we're bringing voices to the table who may not have always been included. Mm -hmm. Um, So trying to talk to our families, uh, parents, our young folks especially. We have some incredible peer leaders in the space who are just dedicated to supporting their friends. um, And really like leaning on those connections and making sure that when when we promise something, we deliver. Um, One of the biggest challenges that came out of the COVID-19 pandemic was our our closure. We had to close down because of lockdown. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying like, oh, well, I guess we're pausing programming for now. Within one week, we were uh, fully on a Discord server (laughs) that a 15-year-old set up for us to start because (laughs) they knew how Discord worked. And we were putting programming online. And now we still have that Discord server because it enables uh, people to access us, whether they're in rural communities, uh, whether they have a disability that prevents them from accessing the space, whether they lack transportation to get here. Uh, So we've really been able to widen our reach just by saying, like, people trust us and rely on us to deliver a certain outcome. Mm -hmm. um, And we're not going to let anything stop us. Yeah. Yeah. And in our staff team, um, that's such a great example Um, Our staff team is also responsive to youth feedback and innovation. And I think that's like, that is demonstrated in that action, in that Discord server. Young folks were like, this is, this is how we're going to connect. Staff was like, cool, (laughs) teach us, help us create infrastructure. (laughs) And uh, yeah, yeah. So, so a lot of that. And I think Inside Out and other organizations serving marginalized communities, um, really have uh, 
a lot of nimbleness because of the need to address multiple issues and often in silos that that we get really adapt at at recognizing we got to change things right now because this is what young people need and um and we need to be responsive to the emergent needs and and certainly i think you know the staff team has been just incredibly um reflective and flexible um, and, and it's just really, it's really amazing to watch how, how the community of staff comes together to ensure youth are being prioritized, focused, and, and we're implementing their feedback. We have the best staff. It's so true. <laughs> so with all this work that you do, how has working with other organizations, uh, in the area benefited the programs that you guys are working on right now? We have some incredible community partners, uh, one of the beautiful things about being um, an organization that serves a very specific population is that we don't need to be all things for all people, even though sometimes that's our, our desire and our drive, right? Right. So we, we rely on our community partners who are experts in what they do. Um, one of our strongest partnerships is Food to Power, uh, which uh, we rely on for our grocery deliveries. Every Monday, we have about 20 families uh, who are in our community who we deliver groceries to. Food to Power provides the groceries uh, and helps us make those those uh, connections with the food that we need. Mm-hmm. Um, and that actually also started during COVID because people relied on our food pantry and suddenly that wasn't there anymore. But it's been so successful and so necessary that it's just kept going. Yeah, no, it's it's really cool. So one really great thing about not just this podcast, but the fact that I've been doing it for a while is being able to speak to a lot of these different organizations, food to power. I was able to speak to them a couple, a few months ago. Now I spoke with Slade Custer over there and, you know, just being able to hear about the connections that are made in the community and then hearing how, you know, other organizations are working together, working together. And uh, at the time he didn't specifically talk about inside out, but he did talk about food delivery and then, you know, being able to hear you guys talk about it, it. It's just one of those things that I think, Living in this region, you should feel really proud that all of these organizations work together the way that they do. I don't know if it's, I don't know if this is the way it works everywhere, right? I've only really been involved in this here in Colorado Springs, but I mean, to me, it seems like the region does a really good job of reaching out to other organizations and partnering together to meet the needs of people who need need to have their needs met. Um, so just, you know, you mentioning that is, is really great. So uh, thank you for sharing that. Totally. Uh, Another one of our big partners is The Place, uh, the Youth Houseless Shelter. Um, About a third of the youth we serve are experiencing homelessness. Um, And so we are able to really coordinate around how can we make sure that these youth are getting the care and support that they need and deserve. Very good. So I think one of the greatest parts about what I'm able to do is to learn about personal stories about people who have been able to take advantage of the services that are provided from all these great organizations. Uh, Liz, let's start with you. Are there any personal stories that you can share that can help people understand the work that you guys do here at Inside Out? Yeah, um, I, I think this might actually help you understand like the youth that we serve. Um, it's less even like what we do, but just like the quality of their characters. I had the incredible honor of uh, DMing a Dungeons and Dragons campaign last summer. Uh, Incredible. Incredible. (laughs) And it was virtual. So it was a way for like youth who couldn't always come to the space to interact. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was so fun. But the very first session, I realized I had made a terrible mistake because I kept putting (laughs) like enemies in front of them for combat. Uh And instead of fighting the giant sponsor, the giant spider monster, they adopted it. Um, Instead of looting the abandoned house, they were like, oh, I think someone might be in trouble upstairs. Let's just go straight there. Like they didn't try to loot the dresser or anything. And I realized that like these young folks are just too good mm-hmm. for like the typical D and T format. <laughs> it was like they just they're in it to make friends. Yeah, um, and that was one of the most like enlightening and also just joyous experiences I've had here. Yeah, and for, and for those the for the uninitiated, a yes. DM is a dungeon, dungeon master. master. <laughs> yes, very good. Also known as a GM, a game master. Yeah, very good. Okay. <laughs> uh, how about you, Jesse? What 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 do you think? Yeah, you know, I mean, there's just so many little moments where you go into the community space, you know, after having to do some really hard things, maybe, you know, having really hard conversations or negotiating some of the polarity, you know, that might exist. Um, and, and some of the, you know, 
the hatred that exists in the community. And then you go into the community center <laughs> and there's this whole setup, okay? And and there's like lights and there's it there's cameras and there's a youth variety show. And the youth variety show <laughs> is like exactly what you would think that is. And the host <laughs> is like our events manager who also is an actor and has made a like theme song, like written, recorded. It's the Youth Variety Show. Okay, so the Youth Variety Show starts with this theme song. (laughs) And then you got young people stepping up and they're just like, you know, performing poetry or like reciting pie like as in the digits, oh, <laughs> like, hey. like or, or more impressive than poetry to some. Yeah, yeah I mean, you just never know. It's a variety of mm-hmm. talent, and ver- like talent shows up in so many different ways for young people. And then, so you're just watching this, and you're like, "Oh my gosh, I'm so impressed!" And every like, you look around the room, and you have adults like staff that are like clapping, hooting and hollering, laughing, just cheering these young people on no matter what, Mm -hmm. like, and you see them cheering each other on. And then, and then this sort of organic things happens where it turns into the young folks sitting down together and just talking about what inside out means to them and sharing like their personal stories of like, how violence against the community is impacting them. And I'm talking about like 14, 15 year olds and with profound honesty and vulnerability and kindness. And, and you just, and you're like, gosh, you know, if people in this world, if these young people could just be at the front of the room and this was what people could hear instead of what you turn on and see in the news. If you mm-hmm. could hear how these young people are experiencing their lives, the difference it makes to have a community and a place like Inside Out Youth Services and the support of adults and what their vision is for how we could all be better for young people. I mean, it's I, I go and I attend and then I'm like, we're going to be okay. This world is going to be okay because these young people are our future mm-hmm. and they are just beyond the hate they just aren't even they're just thinking in so many different ways it's just beautiful and gorgeous and it's like that every week yeah Yeah. (laughs) like but but a different thing yeah one of my favorite uh uh moments was uh there was a new person who just come in they'd just been enrolled and you could tell they were nervous there were you know people all around someone was beating they were watching anime someone was playing piano and this poor young person just like walked in like oh no what do i do here what am i doing here i should just go and then one young person came up and said hi i'm this is my name and we're best friends now and like grab them and like set them down and then they talked like about school and about life and about their experiences for like an hour and a half and this new young person was just smiling and laughing and beaming really um and the difference you can see of of comfort when they realize they're gonna be okay uh is really beautiful so as two individuals who have said in this podcast that you found your place here like this this is this feels like the spot for you when you see these outcomes taking place, like what does that do for you personally? Not just for the mission of the organization, but you personally, like what does that do for you? I might cry when I say this. I'm going to try not to. <laughs> I'm a Pisces. I cry all the time. Um, <laughs> for me, part of it is like healing that inner child in a lot of ways. Um, recognizing that I didn't have some of these things that, that, our young folks have that we're able to provide even um, and recognizing that that's not fair. And I should have been able to have those things that should have been a life that I was allowed to lead, but also being so overjoyed that there are now these, these children, these teens, these young adults who have more opportunities to thrive than past generations did in a Mm. lot of ways. Um, Our, our community, the LGBTQ community in general is all about just like trying to make the future better for the people who are going to come after. And it's fulfilling to see that, that we're getting there, you know, not in all the ways there are still so many challenges, but the young folks at least are so strong and creative and funny and brave and resilient and they shouldn't have to be, but they are. Um, and like Jesse said, like you see them and you're like, we're, we're going to be okay. Mm-hmm. 
So for me, I, I think, you know, I loved all that sharing. There's so much I relate to it, you know, and can't add. And, and the thing I was thinking of, there were two things I thought of, and one is enthusiastic joy. Mm. Like, like recapturing that vibrancy and, you know, unhindered joy that happens when you're a young person or a teen, like being goofy, you know, and, and being like weird and, (laughs) and like, and, and being affirmed in all of it, like, and, and what, you know, what can come out when you, when you can just be enthusiastically joyful without baggage. And because in my life, you know, um, the metaphor I like to use is a backpack that, you know, everybody comes to inside out with a backpack, all of us, Mm -hmm. you know, anyone who visits here. And in that backpack is all of your life experiences, your trauma, your family, your history, your dreams, your goals. And, you know, a lot of times young folks come in here and they hold on to that backpack for dear life their first time in. I mean, their hands are attached to it. Then eventually they drop it at the door and they just start being. And then finally, they're opening it up with the staff and saying, hey, help me sort through this. And, and for me, it's just like, oh my gosh, somebody's sorting. Somebody's helping. Somebody's dropping their baggage. And, and yeah, like Liz said, like, I, just, I just didn't get that. And um, it is incredibly fulfilling and healing to dedicate my life service to creating more of that. Oh, you said it, Jesse. You said it. <laughs> so we've, I think we've talked about a fair number of programs, but I'm sure there's more that Inside Out does. Uh, can you talk about some of those other programs that Inside Out offers uh, that you feel would be important for listeners to know about? Well, um, one thing that uh, I have the pleasure of overseeing is our, our trainings. Um, and that is probably my favorite part of my job. Um, we get to go to uh, area organizations, businesses, uh, sports teams, schools, uh, mental health clinics, all of these places to just talk about what our community is going through, uh, what they need, um, and also to give people just a little bit of background um, and some grace. You know, a lot of folks are worried that because they don't know that they're a bad person or because they make a mistake, they're a bad person. And that's not the case, you know, and we get to walk into these rooms and be like, here's some information, here's some experience, some best practices, and also here's a place where you can bring your questions where it won't harm people. Uh, So often we find our young folks are the ones fielding questions from their parents, from their teachers, from their families, and we get to be that in-between where it's like, tell us your questions, you know, we'll talk them through, we'll be that support for you, and that frees the youth up to just be youth. Uh, And it also provides this incredibly necessary outlet to describe and discuss something that is challenging for a lot of folks who haven't really been exposed to the community or uh, know a whole lot about it. Um, So our trainings, I think, are are really impactful, and I'm really proud of them. You know, I really love our our school advocacy and um, Safe at Schools Coalition. And what I really love about it is that it brings together – Folks, okay, so last year we had young people from 88 different schools attend our programs. So we're talking about youth across the whole community here. Mm-hmm. And and our Safe at Schools Coalition's mission is really like how do we work together to increase safety in schools? Because we know when we increase safety for LGBTQ plus young people, we increase safety for all students. Mm-hmm. So, so it's administrators, school board officials, youth, parents, teachers, um, various other community organizations all working with the same purpose in mind, which is supporting and resourcing students. And it's just so impressive. And and part of the reason I just adore and appreciate this particular um, group is because when my very first um, interaction and work with Inside Out, uh, you know, back in 2010 or so was when it had just started, that coalition had just started. And, you know, we have a school advocate who is mediating between, you know, students and administration and supporting some of the challenges that happen in schools, supporting youth, families, teachers. And that is just 
uh, a huge program that people just don't know that we do. Um, you know, we, we have the brick and mortar community center, but we are working out in the community in so many different ways to resource and support these young people. And anyone can join the Safe at Schools Coalition. If you're interested in volunteering, but maybe aren't able to commit to a weekly shift or something like that, you know, the coalition meets once a month um, and all you have to do is show up. Uh, obviously, there's more you can do if you want to commit to leading a subcommittee or uh, working on some specific projects. But just having voices in the room makes a difference. Mm-hmm. So for those who may be seeking the services of Inside Out, uh, how can they best go about obtaining those? So if you uh, email us through our website or DM us on any social media uh, or give us a call at 719-328-1056, uh, we will direct you to the right department for whatever your need is. If you're a young person who wants to get enrolled, uh, we'll talk to our program staff and get you an enrollment appointment. Uh, if you're a volunteer, we'll talk to you or connect you with our volunteer coordinator. If you want to talk outreach, training, Safe at Schools Coalition, you'll probably get me. Um, <laughs> but either way, we will connect you. And that website is www.insideoutysforyouthservices.org. Very good. And then before we close things out here, I was just wanting to give each of you an opportunity to add anything else that you think would be important for listeners to know about. The more we talk about LGBTQ young folks in public discourse, the less I think we realize that these are kids, um, that they are young people who are just trying to live their lives the best they know how, trying to learn and grow and become who they're going to be in this, in this world. Um, so I just encourage folks to always remember that that these are human beings um, and they are brilliant human beings who we should all be honored to have in our communities. I would, I, I think the thing that I would add is do not accept headlines as the truth. So similar to what Liz was saying in, you know, there's just so much information right now in headlines and, and rather than accepting those headlines Really be curious about these young folks and what they're challenged with and what their needs are. Listen to their voices. Um, really make space for that and challenge yourself to not jump to conclusions or hang on to really either or thinking. You know, we're humans, we're complex. Young people are humans and they're complex. And it isn't so this way or that way. There's lots of different ways to support these young people, but you have to be open to being curious and not just accepting headlines as the truth. Very good. Well, well thank you, Jesse and Liz, for having me over here today. I appreciate you taking the time and for the work that both of you do here at Inside Out. So again, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for visiting us. If you are interested in listening to additional episodes of Beyond the Dais, be sure to look for us on Podbean or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>